The Soul of a Poem What is the soul of a poem? Cheers. Hey guys, I want to talk about poetry, specifically poems, because number one, poems, I, they're my favorite. I love poetry. I've loved poetry since I can remember. I've written over 600 poems. After 600, I stopped counting them and I just kept writing. So, number two, I don't think there is a number two. I just love poetry, so that's just number one, front and center. What is the soul of a poem? Does that even make sense? Or is it just something that sounds poetic? We live in an extraordinary time where our phones through apps or computers through pro computer programs can write poetry. And in many ways, it could feel like it d diminishes the value and even the soul, I'll explain that more later, of a poem. If an app writes a poem, or if a computer program writes a poem, it's still a poem. But it's missing a special element, and that's what I call the soul of the poem. And that's where we, as poets, come in. Computers and apps, they can write poems, they can take whatever algorithm, they can take an algorithm and put together a poem that could even be moving. But it's missing the element of the soul of the poem, which comes from the poet. Because obviously poems don't have souls. I'm not saying poems have souls, you know literally. I'm just saying that poetically. When we write a poem, we draw from the world around us and from inside of us. And we take that and we pour it into our poetry. So when you write a poem, a part of you is poured into the poem through the words, through your language that you speak. Because if you look at the work of a single poet, at all of his work, each poem is different. Each poem expresses something else. It expresses a time in his life. It expresses feelings and emotions. It expresses beliefs. It expresses what he's dealing with politically. C. Day Lewis said, No good poem, however confessional it may be, is just a self-expression. Who on earth would claim that the pearl expresses the oyster? And with that image of a pearl being a poem and the poet being the oyster, you have a different viewpoint, or at least I have a different viewpoint. The pearl is made from an irritation, from a grain of salt, and it's coated by the beautiful insides of the oyster. And it creates this beautiful, sometimes very expensive treasure to the oyster to the oyster, oyster, or oyster. That is a weird word. To the oyster. <laughs> to the oyster, it was starting out as an irritation. That was, at that point, the sole focus of its life. And it was very irritating, and it just had to coat it to stop that irritation. If you see your writing of poetry as a way to deal with, to understand, to cope with, to express the world around you and inside of you, then who knows what will come from that because you'll be drawing from that well, from the well of your soul, and that will be translated into your poem, and that could create the pearl, the poem that shows the actual soul of the poem that will show a part of the poet's soul, a part of an expression, and that's where the soul of a poem comes from. Poetry. What is a poem? Well, let us dwell on that thought. Let us dwell on the thought of what is the soul of a poem and where does it come from?
After writing over 600 poems, I can say that some of them were just little ideas, quickly thrown on the paper. Other ones I weighed it out and I tried to put it down perfectly. And what matters is that it's written. So if you want to write poetry or if you do write poetry, believe in yourself as a poet. Just keep on writing and try to write from your heart. Try to write from your soul because it will be translated into paper. It will be translated into words and it could become that pearl. So I hope this gives you a new viewpoint on writing poetry, perhaps reading poetry. I hope it inspires you to write poetry because I believe that everyone has that ability to write poetry because we all have a soul, we all have a heart, we all have a spirit to draw from and of course we live in this crazy world which gives us plenty of material to pull from. If you're that person that says, well, I wish I could write poetry but just don't I just can't or I don't write poetry I can't do it only real poets can write and I'm not one of them here's what I say to you you're wrong you can write poetry it may not be how you want it to be in the beginning but that doesn't mean you should give up just keep writing it keep practicing Keep writing poetry because you know what, after maybe 600 poems or more, you might write one that you love or more, hopefully more after 600, I have more than that after 600, and you never know. If you keep writing, there, it's just logical. One good poem will come out of a bunch of bad poems. So don't think you can't write poetry, you can. Cheers. Well, if you like this video, please make sure to share it out, give me a thumbs up, and leave me a comment below. And if you haven't, subscribe to my channel. No, I'm serious. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure to do that. I talk about writing. I have a vlog about writing. That's what you're watching. Thanks again. And remember, write like a snowflake, which means write like yourself. Bye, guys. We're all but oysters in a sea. What is your pearl?